This is going to be a quick video on how to set up materials for video game models in Blender, and I'll be going over a general workflow that works for most game models. If you've watched the previous two videos, you should already have a model in your scene, and you'll be familiar with the different types of textures we'll need to build our materials. But first, we're going to get organized. In Blender, open the Shader Editor and split your viewport so you can also see the UV Editor. This helps when identifying which part of the model each material is affecting. If your model came in separate pieces, join the pieces together so it's easier to manage. Now in Edit Mode, click Select under the Materials list to highlight the faces that the material is applied to. This way you can figure out what it actually is. It could be the body, hair, or face, and you can rename it accordingly. For example, Fortnite models usually come with face accessory, which turns out to be the hair in this case. When you can't tell from just looking, you can use the UV editor to check the UV layout and match it against texture images. If you see empty areas on the UV map, it might mean that material is being shared with other parts of the character, so you'll need to do some investigating. This is Juno from Overwatch 2, and like before, I've joined everything into a single object. But now we've hit a common issue. None of the materials are named properly. Instead, we're seeing hexadecimal IDs like FA21 and FA22, which are most likely used by the game engine. So we'll need to figure out what each material does manually. Let's start with FA21. When we select it in edit mode, it highlights most of the body, but the UV editor shows that part of the UVs are missing, so something else also uses this material. So let's investigate this a bit. In the UV editor, open the texture folder and look for one that matches the layout of those UVs. Since we know what Juno looks like, we can guess the body texture. I'm fairly certain it's 4E068, and when we load it, the UVs line up perfectly. And as we can see, the face texture occupies that missing corner that we saw in the UVs. So we can rename FA21 to body. Now on to FA22. This one doesn't highlight anything obvious, but the only texture that seems to make sense is the decal texture. So let's load it in, and sure enough, the UVs match. So we'll rename this one decals. When working with complex models from games like Overwatch or Marvel Rivals, this detective work is often necessary. Materials won't be labeled and textures won't always be obvious, but by matching UVs to textures, you can figure out what's what and clean things up before making your materials. Once your materials are renamed and organized, let's start setting them up. I usually start from scratch, so delete the existing shader nodes and add a new principal shader. This avoids any problems with the imported materials. We can drag and drop textures directly into Blender, but Fortnite uses TGA textures, which won't preview in Windows, so we can't really tell what ones to add. So instead, we can add an image texture node and open the folder, and this will preview the images for us. So we're looking for body textures. Let's just start with the diffuse texture, which is the color texture. Now all we have to do is connect this to the base color node of the principal shader, and we have some color. Duplicate the image texture, and now we can click the file icon and open another image. This time we can add the normal map, but change the color space of the normal map to non-color. If a texture doesn't affect the color of the character, it should be set to non-color so that Blender can read it and deal with it correctly. So now add a normal map node, plug the image into the color input, and connect it to the normal slot of the shader. Now we can talk about packed textures. Two of the body textures are very strange colors, and these are what we call packed textures. If you're wondering how I know this, I've explained all of this in my texture video, so go back and watch it. It's pretty quick, and it'll walk you through all of the different textures and how to identify them and what they're used for. With a packed texture, we need to separate the RGB channels, and we can do this with the separate color node. With Node Wrangler enabled, we can control shift click and see that the red channel is the ambient illusion, green is either roughness or specular, and I think the blue could be the subsurface map. To use Ambient Occlusion, multiply it with the base color using a Mix Color node set to Multiply. Now we have a slider to control how much Ambient Occlusion we have. We can plug the green channel into the roughness, but the character looks too shiny, and this is usually an indicator that the roughness map is actually a gloss map, so we need to add an Invert Color node, and this will make it look more natural. Now lastly, take the blue channel, which is likely the subsurface map, and plug it into the subsurface weight input on the principal shader. You can leave it as is for now, but depending on your lighting, you might want to tone it down. If the skin looks too waxy or glows unnaturally, that's a sign the subsurface scattering is too strong. To adjust it, just add a color ramp node and lower the white value until it looks more natural. We're still missing a metallic map, and it's one of the four core textures you'll always need. These are color, roughness, normal, and metallic. By separating the channels of this final packed texture, we can see that the red and green channels highlight the metallic areas. We'll use the red channel as it gives a nicer result in this case. There's quite a bit of grey, which means those parts will be only slightly metallic. But since Fortnite is a stylized game, this subtle metallic map can add some extra stylization to the models. 
Sometimes you'll come across texture maps that are difficult to identify, but that's fine. As long as you've set up the four core textures, so color, normal, roughness, and metallic, your material will already look pretty good. So now we can repeat this same process for the hair and face. One easy way of doing this to save us from having to redo all of these nodes is to just copy and paste them into the hair and head materials, and then just open up the correct textures. This way you won't have to set up any of the color ramps or separate color nodes again. Sometimes the eyes on your character can look too dark or lifeless, so here's a quick trick to make them stand out. First, add a new material slot and assign the same head material. Click the number next to the name and make it a unique copy, then rename it to eyes. Now select the eye geometry and assign this new material to it. In the shader editor, add an emission node and plug the eye color texture into it. Then add a mix shader and blend between the principal shader and the emission. This gives you a slider to control how flat the shading of the eyes will be, which is especially helpful if ambient occlusion or lighting is making them too dark. For extra impact, add a hue saturation node and boost the saturation and brightness slightly. This really helps the eyes stand out. Here's a quick before and after, and I think it makes a huge difference to how appealing your model is. And that wraps up this video. We focused on a Fortnite model, but this workflow applies to almost any game character. In the next video, I'll show you how to do some very basic rigging so that you can pose the models. The link will be on screen and in the description. Thanks for watching.